This tiny solar cell might be about to revolutionize solar energy as we know it. This begins with a roof you might overlook. At first glance, it looks ordinary, a quiet slope of tiles beneath the weight of sky. But look closer and you see the faint shimmer of hidden cells, drinking sunlight without noise. The regular solar cells you know are made with silicon and they are actually quite inefficient at converting sunlight into energy. A hum moves through wires, steady and unseen, like a second heartbeat for the house. The change is not loud or sudden. It grows in shadows, in bills, in choices made by families who want something different. This is where the race begins, not in grand arenas, but on rooftops, where light becomes power and silence holds a promise for tomorrow. The race and the roof line. Solar energy did not arrive with great noise or fireworks. It crept in quietly, finding its first place on the roofs of modest homes, schools, and small shops. At first, the panels looked like strange black slabs, angled toward the sky, reflecting back the morning sun. Some people thought of them as novelties, others as experiments. Yet beneath those simple shapes was the beginning of a profound shift. Each rectangle was more than glass and silicon. It was a doorway into a different kind of power. In neighborhoods across the world, installations began one by one. A family added a set of panels, then a school installed its own array, and soon entire blocks seemed to tilt toward the light. This was not just an architectural change. It was economic, cultural, and deeply personal. Every panel reduced a bill, lowered a reliance on the grid, and gave families a sense of control they had never known before. People who once thought of electricity only as something supplied by distant companies began to feel part of the production themselves. The industry responded to this hunger. Factories adjusted their pace, supply chains shifted, and governments wrote policies to encourage more roofs to shine. But with demand came strain. Polysilicon, the backbone of traditional cells, became scarce. Prices spiked, and investors worried whether the growth could last. Yet the installations did not stop. The desire for independence, for cleaner air, for lower costs, kept pushing the market forward. Still, questions lingered. The panels were heavy and rigid. The process to make them was complicated, energy-hungry, and dependent on scarce materials. Could there be another way? Could the sun's energy be captured with devices that were lighter, cheaper, and simpler to build? For many, that question became the new frontier. As much as rooftops were changing the world, the true race was not only about covering more surfaces, it was about finding new materials and methods that could make solar energy even more accessible. A quiet competition had begun, not in fields or stadiums, but in laboratories and workshops, searching for the next leap that would take sunlight further into human life. Ferroelectric crystals, a new bias. Inside certain crystals, a hidden tilt exists. It is not visible, but it shapes how charges move. When sunlight touches this ordered structure, electricity flows without the need for the old method of doping silicon. There are no layers of positive and negative zones, no delicate balance that requires costly steps. Instead, the material itself carries the preference, guiding electrons with its own inner bias. This idea changes the rules. It means panels can be made with fewer resources, using compounds like barium titanate that are far easier to form. The cost drops, the weight drops, and the possibilities rise. Thin sheets can be rolled, placed, and shaped where traditional panels could never fit. They promise electricity not just for roofs, but for vehicles, windows, and curved walls. What was once heavy and fragile may soon be light, flexible, and simple enough for anyone to use. Layered films, turning arrangement into power. One crystal alone cannot do enough. Pure barium titanate, for example, absorbs little light and gives back only a faint current. But when thin films are layered with other compounds, something remarkable happens. Strontium titanate and calcium titanate placed side by side in delicate stacks begin to work together. Each layer is measured in nanometers, so thin that it seems invisible. Yet the pattern creates a far stronger response to sunlight. Light enters, bounces, 
and stirs the lattice, and suddenly, electrons move more freely. The current becomes many times stronger than what a single layer could provide. Engineers use lasers to vaporize and redeposit these films, writing hundreds of layers on a tiny surface. The challenge lies in keeping the order perfect, because even the smallest flaw wastes energy. But when the films align, the result is clear. More power from less material, and a path toward higher efficiency. Flexible thin film on the move. Solar does not always belong on rooftops. Sometimes it follows the road, the water, or the trail. Thin film sheets made with copper indium gallium selenide bend and curve where rigid panels cannot. They attach to vans, boats, and tents, giving power to travelers far from any grid. Unlike heavy glass modules, these rolls weigh little and can be lifted by hand. Installation is simple. Glue, clips, or even an adhesive backing. What makes them stand out is their resilience in dim light. Clouds, shade, or dust reduce the strength, but they do not silence it. The cells keep producing, even if only part of the surface sees the sun. That reliability matters for campers, workers, or anyone who needs energy in uncertain conditions. Flexibility here is not only about shape, it is about freedom. It means electricity can travel anywhere, carried quietly on the surfaces that people already use. Heat to light, thermophotovoltaics. Not all sunlight must be caught directly. Some of it can be stored as heat, then turned back into light when needed. This is the idea behind thermophotovoltaic cells. They sit close to blazing sources, glowing blocks that reach thousands of degrees. Instead of spinning turbines, these cells quietly catch the high-energy photons pouring out of the heat and convert them into electricity. The design has three parts. The top layer takes in the most powerful light. A second layer collects what slips through, adding more current. Beneath them, a mirror reflects the remaining photons to the heat source, so little is wasted. The process is silent, with no moving pieces to wear out. The promise lies in scale. Imagine massive graphite blocks heated during the day, holding warmth for hours. At night, thermophotovoltaics draw that stored glow and feed it back as steady power. Efficiency has already passed 40%, rivaling the best engines in use. If costs fall as researchers hope, whole neighborhoods could run on this cycle with solar energy captured, stored as heat, and released again as light long after the sun has set. Texas, bills, and resilience. In Texas, the value of solar became personal. Long heat waves strained the grid, and families watched electricity costs climb higher each month. Some turned to rooftop panels as relief, trading unpredictable bills for steady payments on a system they owned. The math was plain. Once installed, the panels kept producing whether prices rose or fell. For many households, the difference was survival. When storms knocked out power lines, homes with panels and storage kept lights on, refrigerators cold, and phones charged. The sun became not just a source of savings, but a shield against uncertainty. It was proof that energy could come from above, independent of fragile wires. Each array was more than hardware, it was reassurance that daily life could continue, even when the grid faltered. Solar power in Texas was no longer a theory. It was a reality lived in real time. Beauty versus arithmetic. The solar roof. A roof can be more than shelter. Some homeowners wanted panels hidden, not bolted on top. They turned to solar tiles that look like slate or glass, blending with the house. At first glance, they seem ordinary, yet each tile quietly collects daylight, sending energy into the home. The price is heavy, and the payback takes years. But for those who choose it, the decision is not only about money, it is about pride in design, about knowing the roof itself works harder than it appears. Numbers matter, but so does trust in the future. These roofs remind us that energy can be both useful and beautiful shaping homes into something quietly modern without losing their familiar face.
The Recycling Reckoning Every panel has a beginning, but not yet a graceful end. Glass, polymers, and metals are fused so tightly that breaking them apart is costly. Many old panels have ended up in landfills, their valuable silver and silicon locked inside. The story of clean energy carries this shadow, a reminder that progress is never simple. Researchers search for better methods, ways to peel apart layers, to recover materials without harsh chemicals or wasted heat. If successful, recycling could lower costs, reduce mining, and make solar truly sustainable. Until then, the challenge remains. To build a future on sunlight, we must also learn how to close the circle, giving panels a second life instead of leaving them buried in the ground. The journey of solar power is not just about panels or numbers. It is about choices made in silence, roofs that change without notice, and a grid learning to bend. New crystals promise lighter paths, thin films bring freedom, and heat engines hold the night. Yet each step demands care, safe work, fair access, honest recycling, and patience for progress. The sun waits. It has always waited. What matters is how we prepare to meet it with humility and resolve. A solar future is not given. It is built, one careful layer at a time, in light and in trust.